minutes. If you please take your Bibles and open them with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one. Jeremiah, chapter number one. I'm thankful again, thankful again for what the Lord does and what He continues to do. And um, I'm just about five minutes away from taking this coat off. Amen. Jeremiah chapter number 1, begin our reading in verse number 4. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Now, our Father, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Thank you for this blessed book that you've given unto us and the power that's in these pages. I am praying now that the Spirit of God would empower us and, Lord, that He would use us one more time to be a blessing to the people of God, to be a blessing to those that are lost, Father, we are asking in Jesus' name, fill us with your Spirit. And Lord, have your complete will and way. We pray this all in the name, above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ, in his name we pray. Amen and amen. First Samuel chapter number 2, a prayer from Hannah here. And she says in verse number 2, There is none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Oh, how that is true. Amen. Hear the prophet Jeremiah pin down these words. And he said before that he was born, God knew him. I want to deal with that subject here this morning. Before it all, there was God. Before it all, there was God was God. May I remind you of this here, that God is self-existing. God is eternal. God Almighty relies upon no one and depends upon nothing to be, to survive, to live, for He is God. God has no origin. God has no creator. And God has no one that is above Him for He is God. This is who I'm talking about. The same one that Jeremiah said, it was the Lord, amen, Jehovah, God Almighty. The psalmist said in Psalms chapter 90, verse number 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, from the everlasting to everlasting thou art God. And that's who we're talking about this morning. The God of all glory. Before there was anything, there was God. Before it all, there was the Lord. May I say this here? Before there was a beginning and an end, there was God. Amen. Before there was a beginning or an end, there was God. Before there was a heaven and the angels above, there was God. Before there was light and before there was darkness, God Almighty was all by Himself. Holy, majesty, righteous, and lovely. Amen. May I say this to you today? Our God is before all. What I'm trying to tell you now is a very simple thing that God was before all. He came from nowhere and no one and nothing. You read that in the Word of God in Habakkuk chapter 3 and in verse number 3. Our God is before them all. Amen. Now we see here four things about God but being before all. Number one in the text of what you'll see here today and verse number four. Before it all there was the Word of God. Amen. There was 
was the Word of God. John chapter 1 and verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. More or less what the Bible is telling you and I, when there was a beginning, when time started, the Word of God was before time. Amen. God's Word, church, was before anything. It was settled in heaven. God's Word was settled before it was spoken to mankind. Amen. What are you saying here, preacher? Before John 3, 16 was spoken out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was already settled in heaven. It had already been spoken by God Himself. He is before all. Amen. I thank God for the Word of God and that the Bible tells us many things about God. But see, we're learning these things, church. We're understanding these things and I want you to understand that God pinned down His Word before He spoke it to you and I. Before it all, there was the Word of God. Before it all, hallelujah, I'm glad, amen, that God knew Jeremiah 33 and 3 was already there, amen. Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God already knew this here and it was before over there in 2 Chronicles 7 verse number 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, praise God. The Bible uh, is telling us, the word of God is telling us that before it all, there was God's Word. Revelation chapter number 20 as well and verse number 15 was there that whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. May I say as well, number two, before it all, there was God's Word, but there was also God's wisdom. Amen. Notice what he said in verse number five. He said, I knew thee. <laughs> Thank God, amen, that God is an all-knowing God, praise the Lord, and he knew you. He knows you. May I say this here? You read over there in Proverbs chapter eight, and we don't have time to go through that, but it's talking about wisdom. And wisdom, hallelujah, was before all mankind. Who is wise? Who is the only wise God? The glorious God of heaven and a man is the only one that is wisdom within itself. And before it all, there was God's wisdom. May I say this here? God didn't have to learn anything from anybody. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't have to go to school. He didn't have to have a teacher there. No. He already knows everything. He knows what happened before it happened. He knew and knows things that we don't even know about. I thank God that God Almighty does not have a schoolmaster. He does not have a teacher because he is wise. Amen. Before it all, there was the wisdom of God. That's an amazing thing. Over there in Psalms chapter 147 and verse number 5, he talks about God's wisdom and how he created everything. But believe me on this right here. The Word of God is teaching you and I and telling us before God had this wisdom. He didn't learn how to create things. He already knew how to. Ooh, man. I know that's simple, but it's a wonderful thing, amen, that he already knew what, how to make mankind. He already knew how to make the tree grow and make the earth itself rotate. He already knew how to make the sun to shine before he spoke it all into existence, amen. I'm just telling you this morning, before it all, there was God's Word. Before it all, there was the wisdom of God, amen. That's just a beautiful thing to know that we have an all-knowing God, amen. Nothing gets by him, amen. Neither will you, friend. You're not going to be able to connive yourself, con yourself, trick God and him, twisting his, his arm to believe something that is not true. Amen. That's why he says he knows those who are his. Amen. He knows. Amen. And I say this as well, before it all, there was God's Word. Before it all, there was God's wisdom. And we also see here in the text, before it all, there was God's will. Notice he said in verse number 5, he said, I sanctified thee. Amen. He said, before you were born, out of your mother's womb, he said, I sanctified thee. Oh, this is the thing what he's telling us and teaching us right here from God's holy word. In Genesis chapter 2, when God created man, why did he create man? For mankind to dwell with him, for mankind to have fellowship with him, to be in harmony with God. And God walked with man in the cool of the garden. And God fellowship with Adam there all the days long there. They were in communion. They were in fellowship. They were loving one another in the presence of God. That's why God created man. 
man, but we know that man fell there, man fall, and his fall was great. When he sinned against God and broke the commandments of God. So when he broke the commandments of God and God being a holy God, being a righteous God, he'll have no fellowship with the works of unfruitful darkness of there. But God Almighty, being a holy God, a loving God, he made a way, amen. He made a way for all mankind to be sanctified, hallelujah. And God's will, and Peter tells us in 2 Peter, his will is not that any should perish, but all come to repentance here. Our God in heaven, He wants to have a relationship with everybody. Amen. And before you were born, before man was made, this is what God's will was, is for you to be with Him. Amen. I stand in amazement of that. That God Almighty says, I want you, I want you, and I want you. Before we were even born, hallelujah. I'm talking about His will. May I say this? Listen to me now. The Bible teaches us before anyone is sanctified, before anyone is holy there, that holiness, that sanctification, that righteousness, it comes through faith. Amen. It comes through faith. It's not of works, friend. It's not. It's not of good deeds. It's not of keeping things. It's not of abiding by a set of rules. But it's simply faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus and Him alone. Amen. This is the will of God. And before it all, there was His will. Amen. Boy, there's so much more we can say about that. Why? Salvation is beautiful. Hallelujah. I hope you know the Lord this morning. I hope you know what it means to be saved. I hope you know what it means to be forgiven. What it means to be cleansed. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you this right here. Can I share this with you? If you don't mind, I'll share this with you. Praise the Lord. We had last Sunday, Sunday before last, and the Sunday before that, the Sunday there. Oh, we were drenching with sweat. Boy, we were just soaked down. And our deodorant, boy, it just took a left turn. It should have kept right. Amen. But I'm just telling you this right here. Boy, we was all sweating, boy. We just smelt kind of bad there. I thank God that I was able to go home. I was able to go home and I was able to cut on that water. I was able to get in that shower and be cleansed. Hallelujah. It's refreshing when the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses the soul of man. And it's all done by faith in Him and in Him alone. Praise God. It's His will. Amen. But also may I say this, I told you there was four things. Before it all, there was the Word of God. Before it all, there was the wisdom of God. Before it all, there was the will of God. But also, before it all, there was the way of God. He told Jeremiah, he said, I ordained thee in verse number 5. Oh yes, God, God has a purpose for you. He does. You know, we'll say it so many times and boy, it just seems like it rolls off the back of some people. But there's a calling in your life particularly from God. Not from man, not from your mother, not from a school teacher, but from God. Amen. He has a purpose for your life. Here he told Jeremiah, I want you to be the one. I want you to be that weeping prophet. I want you to be the one to go to the nation of Israel and proclaim their sins and tell them the judgment of God. That was God's will for his life. Not mine, not yours, but that was his. God has a will for you. God has a plan for you. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. God wants to use you. But that using part comes after sanctification. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, praise God. Hey, we're saved by grace through faith, that not, that not of works. It is a gift of God, not least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created unto what? Good works, amen. God's got a will for you. God's got a calling in your life. There's a purpose, praise the Lord. And I want to say this right here. It was all before you were born. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that just blesses my soul. But I'm about done right here, church. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see this right here. Before it all now. Before it all, there was God. Before it all, God had a word for you. Before it all, God was wisely planning out your life with Him. Isn't that something? 
Think about that now. As I said to you, who God is. Boy, and, and, and what I described to you of His just, His holiness, His majesty, His wonderfulness there, His wrath. I mean, so much more. God, so much more. I didn't even scratch the surface of telling you who God He is. But yet He says He's got a plan for you and I to be with Him, to live with Him, to rule and reign. Praise the Lord. And this was all before we were even born. The Word of God is telling this here, church. And boy, does this not speak to your heart? I pray this does. It speaks to your heart of the great love that God has for you. Amen. What a great love. John said it this in 1 John. He said, Behold, what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed upon us. Do we not see this here? That God Almighty, before it all, had all these things for you and I. God knew you, but yet He still loves you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Can I say this? Listen to me now. God knew your name before you got your name. Amen. Oh, yes. God knew your name before mama named you, before daddy named you, or maybe your aunt or uncle, somebody, whoever else named you. God knew your name. He knew your identity. He knew your gender. He knew everything about you. Our God knows your frame, and He knew your frame before you were born into this world, before the doctor took you out of the mother's womb, before the doctor spanked you on the rear end and made you cry. God already heard the cry. God already seen you born. Our God in heaven, He knew the fingerprint that you were going to have and the uniqueness that it has, praise God. God knows the numbers that's on your head of hair. Hallelujah. Oh, I like it, amen. You read that right there. The Lord said He knows it now. The numbers of the hair that's on you. He said He didn't count them. He said He's got them numbered. Ooh, I love it. Praise the Lord. Y'all might not like it, but I'm just telling you, this is how much He knows us. Now, see, some of you, you done combed your hair this morning, didn't you? Huh? Thank God you did, amen. Some of you may have a problem of that hair falling out. And I love you, amen. I'm with you too, okay? But I'm just telling you, God knows so much about you. He numbered your hairs. And when that strand came out through that comb or through that brush, God Almighty knew that that was 3,531 right there. He knew the number of your hairs, amen. He still knows them. He still knows them, praise God. So what are you saying, preacher? He knows your name. He knows your frame, but He also knows your shame. Oh, yes. He knows the sin, and He knew the sins that you would commit. Now, I, I, you get to hold this, please. You need to get a hold of this. Before you were born, before man was created, I'm talking about the majesty of God. He knew the sins that you were going to do. He knew the wrong. He knew the fornication. He knew the alcohol. He knew the drugs. He knew the lying. He knew the stealing, the cheating. He knew all the backbiting, the gossiping. He knew all that. Do I need to name out your sin? I'm pretty sure I don't have to. It's just already been pegged right now. He knew that you and I were going to do shameful, wicked, disgusting things, but yet God, in His great mercy, He loved us, and He sent His only begotten Son. It was before ordained, before the foundation of the world that Jesus Christ would be sent from God, hallelujah, to redeem mankind. I'm talking about God now. He was before all. He knew your sinful thoughts before you had the first sinful thought. He knew your wicked actions before you committed the first one. He knew the foul words that would come out of your mouth before you uttered it with that tongue. Yet He still loved you. Yet He still loves you. And He loves us so much in the great love. Have you lost sight of Calvary? Can you see Him there clearly on the hill? Can you see Him up there taking your place? Taking your sins? Can you see Him? He said, Preacher, I can't see Him. I didn't ask you where if you've seen Him by these eyes, but you've seen Him with faith. Hallelujah. Do you see Him there in the heart? Of the great love. Her God said, I sing your shame. But I'll do something about that. Amen. It's because I love you. God's salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the love. Before it all. Before it all, there was God. What are you going to do with the love of God this morning? What are you going to do with the love of God this morning? You today. 
I talked about how much he loves you and how much he cares about you and what all he has done for you. He could have cast us off and he'd still be righteous and holy. He could have forsaken us and left us all to ourselves and he'd still be God. But yet God Almighty, before all this took place, Calvary, I'm saying this here because you need to hear this, Calvary was not a last ditch effort. Jesus did not fail. Amen. He completed the will of God and he rose up from the grave three days later victoriously here. God had planned all this out before all the wickedness had taken place. Now I want you to know this as well. If he didn't, what kind of God would he be? What kind of God would he be? He would be a God that didn't know anything. He would be a God that couldn't do anything. But that's not who I'm talking about this morning, friend. For He's a God that can do exceedingly abundantly above all. You can ask your thing. He's a God that's up there righteous and holy in the glories right now. And I thank God that He can step down from His throne and He can invade your car. He can invade your heart. Hallelujah. That's who He is. And He'll change you. When He comes into your life, what will you do with the love of God? What will you do with this great love that's before you today? Will you dismiss it? Will you shrug it off and pass it off and live your own life? Do whatever you want to do? Don't act like you ain't made plans without God, friend. That's the problem today. Too many holier-than-thou individuals. Don't act like you ain't never done anything out of the will of God. My dear friend, I guarantee if I'd ask every single one of you, you'd be honest before thrice holy God. We wouldn't have enough time today to talk about the decisions that you made were wrong. But I'm just telling you, what are you going to do with the love of God? Here it is before you. You've got an opportunity right now. You've got the chance. Are you going to squander it away? Or are you going to receive the love of God? And when you receive the love of God, my dear friend, you understand more and more of who He is and what He's done and what He wants to do in your life right now and what He has in plan for you in the future. Amen. I'm so glad that Sister Sarah sung that song as I thank God when the day comes there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more hospitals, no more, praise God, sin here. And who's done all that? That's God. And He already planned all that before there was a beginning. Hey man, it was God. May I say this to you? Listen now. Simply because God loves you, it doesn't mean you're His child. Amen. Amen. Don't get confused with that, friend. You've been created by God, but you must be born again to be a child of God. He loves you. But my dear friend, it doesn't make you His child. Because I'll say this right here. I love some children that are out here now. I see you. I praise God that you're here. But simply because I love you, that doesn't make you my child. I've only got three. Hey, man, that's my boys. Praise the Lord. That came from the, the womb of their mother, my wife. Hey, man. You've got to be born again through the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to be born again through the gospel to be put into the family of God is what I'm telling you. What are you going to do with the love of God, dear friend? Don't reject it today. Don't push it away. Don't discard it. Don't say, well, another day, preacher. Another day of convenience. Another time in my life. Right now is not a good time for me to give my life to Jesus. I've got all these things planned out. But don't you know what God has in store for you? And I want to tell you this right here. And I know this. What God has in store for you surpasses any of your dreams that you have for yourself. Oh, it does, friend. It does. I want you to know this right here, right now. And I know we didn't do this last Sunday, hadn't done this before, but I just feel that if you need to be saved today, if you need to be born again right now, and the Holy Spirit of God is convicting you of your sins, you know that you have not accepted Christ Jesus. You know that you have not repented of your sins, and you put faith in His death, burial, and resurrection. You know if you were to die today, you would die without God. Now's the time. Today's the hour. Here is your chance. What are you going to do with the love of God? I, I implore you, if you need to step out of your car right now, and you need to come down here and say, Preacher, you want me to make a shame to myself? No, dear friend, I want you to know Jesus Christ. I want you to know Him. 
I'm giving you a personal invitation right now. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Don't listen to the lies that you're telling yourself. Say, preacher, how do you know there's lies being told to me? I listen to them all too many times. I remember being exactly where you're at. I was brought to a crossroads. And the Holy Ghost of God was convicting me. And He was showing me that I was a candidate for the wages of my sins and to spend eternity in a devil's hell. He was showing me that if I died without Jesus Christ, I'd be cast off into outer darkness, no longer to be with God, no longer to be with the family, no longer to be in fellowship or none of this good stuff that we have that's called love and joy. None of that would be mine. I remember that and trying to reason it out in my mind. Why I needed to stay there. Why I didn't need to move. Why I didn't need to come forth. Say, preacher, sounds like you're begging. No, I'm trying to get you to come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Jesus Christ will save your soul. You come today. You step out your car. Say, I drove with somebody else. It doesn't matter who you came with. You come right now. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Be born again into the family of God today. Will you come? May I say this to your church? Listen to me, Westfield Creek, please. When someone comes before you, that means that person is more important than you are. When someone comes before you, that means that person is more important than you are. Is God more important than you? Is God and more important than someone else? Is God more important than something else? The word faith, we break it down in a good acronym. Forsaking all, I take Him. Forsaking all, I take Him. Do you have faith? And are you living out that faith? Is God, can I say the preeminence in your life? Is He number one? in your heart. What? What will you do today? What idol do you have in front of God that needs to be removed out of your life? That thing that you do. I'm so glad I was talking to someone before service here. You know, the real you will be seen by somebody. But God Almighty already knows the real you. He knows what you put before Him. He knows what you bow down and what you worship. For some, it may be a dollar bill. For some, it may be a sport. For some, it may be entertainment. What is it? You know, for some, it actually might even be a physical idol that you bow down and worship. Paganism is still real today, friend, and it's still ungodly. It's not right. What is it? Are you putting anything before God? Say, preacher, how do you know the church is putting things before God? Because, friend, we're not seeing a mighty move of God as He wants to do. It's His will to do these great things. It's His will to do wonderful things and to send a God-sent, Holy Ghost, sin-killing revival. My last question to you today. Are you just honoring God with your lips or with your heart? God Almighty is before all. He's before any. Are you putting Him before all? I pray that you can say yes, not just with words, but also with your life. With your life. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask you again as we pray, you need to step out your car and you need the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. Friend, as I said, He already knows the, the things that you've done wrong. He already knows the shame. He knows the sin. He knows the wickedness. And He still loves you. He said, I'll forgive you. All you got to do is ask. I'll wash you clean there. I will perform in your heart a transformation. I'll deliver you. I will give you love, joy, peace, happiness, long-suffering, patience. I will give you all that through the Spirit of God. He said, I will give you that assurance to where you can know, amen, when you die, you're going to be with me in heaven. God will do that. He'll save you. He'll deliver you from the wrath to come. You need to come to Him and bow down before a holy God and ask, thank God, He'll answer. 
Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the hour and the time. And whew. Lord, I, I, I pray right now that one that's at the crossroads, Lord, that one that has that decision, Lord, they, they must make up their mind right now, dear God. They must make that choice right now. They must choose Christ. Christ above themselves, Christ above this world, Christ above sin, Lord God. May they turn from it. May they repent right now. God, I am praying for that soul that needs to be saved. I pray, Father, that you will, that you'd bring them to this altar that we've made here today before you. And Lord, they'll call on your name. Father, that they will trust in you, that they will believe the good news that Jesus saves. I pray for that child of God right now. Lord, they're struggling. And you already knew they were going to struggle. But yet, God, you got strength for them. You told us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, you told us that we have life residing on the inside of us and we are able to do. Lord, we are able to be overcomers. I pray for that child of God right now, Lord, that they will choose to worship you, adore you, and you are the preeminence. You are the God of their life. And they're bowing down only to you, putting you before everything and all. Father, I pray for the church that you'd help us. Help us right here, oh God, in this time and this age. Father, that we will believe your word, believe in you. And we get serious about the things of God and get serious about you. We thank you for this opportunity to gather today. I pray, Lord. You would be with everyone. And I pray that these words have encouraged the downhearted. And Father, have lifted up, Lord, the heavy heads. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. And amen. If you need the Lord Jesus Christ, we are here for you right now at this time. Say, preacher, my car might block somebody else to get out. Believe me, we can get them out. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. You come today. You come right now, just as you are. You come and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on His name. He'll answer. He'll save you today. Church, we love you. We do appreciate you. As we've talked about this many times before, God's got a will for you. Answer the call. Heed the call. And I know some of you right now, I know some of you, not all, but I know some of you right now, you're listening to the Lord. You're obeying God. You're doing things behind the scene that nobody else knows anything about. But oh, praise God He does. Because you're answering the call. We love you. We appreciate you. May the Lord's blessings be upon you. Until next time, if you need me, I'm a phone call away. God bless you, church.